Hello everyone, I'm Denise Love and today I have a fun new art tool that I'm going to introduce you to that I'm going to start using in some of my art prompt challenges and it's all about color palettes and I love color palettes and I've done a photography workshop on color and I've pulled color palettes out of my own photographs in Photoshop and you can scan Pinterest for color palettes so you don't necessarily need the tool that we're going to talk about today but man it sure is helpful and it gets you outside of working working with the same colors that you always are working with and getting stuck in a color rut and it just gives you some new ideas and inspiration. So today we're going to take a look at the color cube and see how handy it is to have some color palettes that you can hold in your hand and create from and I can't wait to show you the piece of art that I created just randomly pulling a color palette out today. So let's get started. You guys I'm so excited. I've seen this as an advertisement in my Facebook feed for a while and I already love color palettes in any way that I can get it and you know I did this a lot in my photography. I'm gonna open this while I'm talking. <laughs> I used um, color palettes and focused on color palettes in my photography stuff. And I've done a whole color workshop on it and I've done whole how to make your own color palettes from your own photographs and Photoshop. And while well, yes, I can definitely do that with my own photographs, I tend to have a certain style. It's nice and it's dark and it's moody and it's, moody and it's kind of vintage. And um, I might not like cover the whole range of colors that are out there available that I might want to create with my art, but these are super exciting. And you can make, you can, you can search color palettes on Pinterest and come up with a million of these and definitely use that as a free resource. But what I like about this, this just truly made me happy to get these, is they are color palettes that I can hold in my hand and sit here and look at and study and create from. And I love that they've got a picture on there that the colors have come from. So this is kind of what I've done with my photography and Photoshop and I can definitely do these, but what a pain to print out 500 of those and try to come up with a large variety of photos that maybe I would or would not take. And then on the back, it's got like the color and the hex code if you wanted to use this for something other than art. So I got box one and box two. It kind of gives you a little discount if you get both of them. And each of these boxes has like 250 color palettes. Look at these. So now I definitely see some new color palette challenges in our future to go with our, look at that right there. <laughs> Woo, that one right there just made me so excited. I can't wait to do something with that because I can already see my liquid graphite, some pink and uh, burgundy kiritake watercolors. Okay, I can tell that we're definitely going to do something with this. Maybe today. Woo, just put that one to the side. <laughs> okay, so, oh gosh, these are so much fun. And I've also got like color palette books. I don't know if I've ever showed you these or not. These are color flow books by Ivy Newport. And you may or may not be able to get them anymore because uh, she's an artist and they make these on her website. And when they sell out, they sell out. But it's the same exact theory. It's photographs and colors pulled out of the photographs and I really enjoyed having these and using these and being inspired by them and so these are even more convenient because this is a book that's kind of bulky that's out on your desk and it's a little bit larger but oh I have so enjoyed using those that when I saw this pop up I'm like oh my gosh this is speaking my language <laughs> I love that right there um, so these are super fun I'm definitely excited to get the color cube and see how I can use new color palettes in my work and just to pull out the other one and it does have in here how to use them if you need some instructions oh look at that one and I love that there are 500 because oh look at that one because you know I like doing the art challenges and we pull prompts and now we could pull prompts and a color palette and I got oh look how pretty that one is <laughs> these are gorgeous that's right up my alley um, so now you can see um, 
Sometimes I use YouTube as my little excuse to get things that maybe I've been thinking about or considering or maybe I want it and now I'm like, ooh, I could do that in a YouTube video and I just like lean into that. <laughs> I need it <laughs> but don't feel you have to have something like this you can play along with me and my art challenges oh these are so much fun okay let's make something with one of these to make it worth getting and I just wanted you to know the color cube that actually existed and these are by Sarah Renee Clark this is not sponsored I was not paid to use these or say anything but look how beautiful these will be like sitting over here on like my desk or my counter oh, look at that oh loving that okay let me pull out my kiritake colors and my liquid graphite and i'll be right back all right let's make something totally inspired by these young yummy macaroons the gray the pink this one is definitely speaking to me so color 229 let's make something with these yummy colors charcoal blush light pink sand coffee and black yum yum so I'm actually going to pull from my Art Nouveau watercolors and because there's that brown that I wasn't quite seeing a moment ago I also have the 48 pack of these Kiritake colors and there is a brown um, in this set which is the raw deep umber so I'm going to definitely pull that one out for the brown I'm going to use the liquid graphite as um, this graphite charcoal color because I want to <laughs> you could use a charcoal gray if you wanted to but I love graphite liquid graphite in all forms graphite <laughs> and I want a chance to use this and you can get if you can't get the sketch box liquid graphite you can get a uh, high viscosity fluid graphite from Kiritake so that's another option um, you can let graphite be a mark making tool so that's another option you could also just use a gray watercolor another option but let's just see if I can pull these out of here and then we can just make with these and today you know I live in a condo and today is lawnmower day <laughs> um, oh owls are in crimson let's pull that here's the brown um, today's lawn day and I kind of knew it was lawn day and at the same time oh flax beige I got so excited to be doing um, this uh, video because I just got these color cubes yesterday and I'm like oh my god I can't wait to use those uh, I got so excited that I got that that I was like well we're gonna go for it even if it is lawn day and so I will apologize right now if you hear the lawnmowers going because as they are here for a little bit they come and just stand under my window for hours I feel like I'm the only condominium here these are little townhomes um, I feel like I'm the only condo here because they just stand under my window for hours and hours and hours <laughs> maybe they don't really but it feels like it okay so let me tell you my little go-to on these two you could you might be one of those people that tries to get everything 100% exactly to say a color that you're trying to work with um this is pale pink i'm gonna use the pale pink i don't do that my goal in picking a color palette is there we go how about that ha, ha, ha. black and charcoal okay we're gonna consider black and charcoal to be my graphic be my graphite so my goal when i'm picking color palettes like this is to not get hung up on it being exact or not being exact it is to get outside of my color comfort zone and pick a color palette that maybe i'm not normally going to use let's wet these with some water and get them activated and just see you know what can i create with this new color palette and you might try mixing colors pick stuff that you already have and just see you know how close can we get um, to a color palette that maybe we like but it doesn't have to be exact my goal is not to copy it exact my goal is to get close and be inspired by the color palette that I discovered that is new 
It may be fun. And we're gonna make some yummy little abstracts here today and just see what these colors do for us. And then I can guarantee you, you're gonna see this color palette in part of all the little challenges that I do. <laughs> so we'll do some prompt challenges with, oh, look at that, with the, um, with the prompt cards that we made or that we get out of our prompt book. Um, and then we will also say as a little extra layer on there, we will do something like this, where we pull a color palette to add to our prompts. I mean, how much do you love that idea? Totally! See how much I needed this color palette deck? <laughs> <laughs> this is how I talk myself into some of these fun things. Okay, so this is liquid graphite. And we could do this in a couple different ways. The Sketchbox version of this, which I'm sure you can get on their site, um, has a little nozzle and we can put it where we want it. If you're using something like this fluid graphite, it's um, like a really thick, oozy goozy kind of stuff that you could stick your paintbrush down in and use. So because I'm using this, I'm thinking, let's go ahead, spread the graphite in some places. <gasps> Look at it move. Ah! Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, this graphite makes me so happy. <laughs> okay, let's take our paintbrush and add to that. Oh, oh, look at that, man. This stuff's so cool. And your know, graphite is liquid pencil, basically. Um, but for some reason, it has just captured my imagination. And I love it. I love it. I love it. Oh, look at that. Oh, these are beautiful. Look at this. <gasps> Look at these. I love both of these. <laughs> now I'm kind of thinking that we could take a pause, let this kind of dry and do its thing, and then we can mark make on top of these. And I've got some graphite pencil that we could mark make on top of it, and I could mark make while it's wet, but I'm kind of feeling let's let it dry. Let's do a mark make on top of this, so I'll be right back. Okay, these are dry. Let me tell you why I love the graphite before I get any further. Graphite is metallic and besides using the matte graphite which doesn't look metallic at all, um, this is regular graphite and what I like about liquid graphite is it's got little metallic pieces in it and you could come back and burnish when it's dry dry. Let me get a part that's really really dry. You can come back and burnish the liquid metallic and kind of make it shimmer a little bit like get that little pencil shine like you can even see that little pencil shine here on that really thick part um, that's what I like about the graphite it gives it a slight silvery shine it's just amazing let's use our Posca pen and do some mark making here and just play a little bit and finish up our little bitty abstracts so maybe some Posca pen maybe some graphite um, I know white isn't necessarily in our color palette, but I consider white and black to be neutrals. So let's just make some marks.
All right, oh, got all kinds of fun stuff going on here. And check out how did we do on our color palette. I think we did pretty darn good. I stayed within all of the colors here except for adding a tiny bit of gold, which that's your prerogative, you know. Gold, white, black in my mind are all neutrals. <laughs> Let's go ahead and peel the tape and see what we got. And if I didn't mention the paper I was using, I don't remember if I mentioned it or not, I'm just using some sheets of this Hanamal watercolor collection um, that I got some samples of in my Sketchbox grab bag. And these are the 300 GSM. Um, and I'm not sure if these are 100% cotton or not, but I really liked the way the paper handled. So that is a paper I think I would definitely use again. You gotta be real careful peeling your tape. And if you're using a, an artist grade cotton paper, they usually, tape usually peels pretty easy, but if you're using a student grade or papers that have other things in it, you're likely to tear your paper. So if you see any signs of tearing, get your heat gun out and heat that tape up just like that, just heat it up, and that'll release that adhesive um, with your little craft heat gun. This paper does pull a little bit on the edge with the tape, so that is really good to know for future reference. You just gotta be super careful peeling your tape. And when you've got two that you've taped down like I have, don't peel all one direction because that'll definitely tear from the tip of the other sheet. So try to, you know, kind of peel one and then peel the other basically to get that to come off. I'm super excited about this color palette actually. This would be the perfect kind of exercise for your color palette book. If you like to save color palettes that you particularly like, you could kind of flag this somehow with one of your paintings perhaps, or like the materials that you used, you could mark beside it and say, definitely a winner. Check it out. And if you turn it, you can see the slight sheen of the graphite. Can you see that? And the slight sheen of the gold. <laughs> okay, so I'm loving both of these actually. Both of these turned out fantastic. So that was a good paint day. This is, Definitely super fun new tool that I'm gonna be pulling out for the art prompt challenges. And this was just to kind of show off these two color tubes. I just went ahead and got them all. You know, it's kind of amazing what you can justify when you have some purpose for it. And my purpose would be art practice, playing, learning new things, and YouTube videos. <laughs> I'm so naughty. <laughs> but check out all the options. Oh, can't you see some fun times in our future? All right, so I hope you enjoyed a little fun color palette paint demo and checking out the color cubes. And I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.